El Nino. You've no doubt heard the phrase. Maybe you understand it has some kind of impact on our weather across the country, but what exactly do those climatological conditions consist of and why does it have an impact? Don't worry, I'm not the one going to tell you about it. I'm going to bring in the ringer, the expert, the climate scientist from NOAA. Tom DiLiberto is here and you are, as I said, climate scientist, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And I'm so excited that you can break this down for us. What? Let's start with the impacts. Is El Nino and how will it impact our weather here in the U.S.? So El Nino refers to this warming of the waters in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. And just by warming the waters in that part of the globe, it literally can affect the way the atmosphere works, not only in the tropics where it's happening, but also really far away, including the mid-latitudes. And it does that by affecting where the jet stream sets up. The jet stream is that fast area of moving winds, about 30 to 40,000 feet in the atmosphere, and that serves as a storm highway. Well, El Nino kind of shifts where that tends to be across the mid-latitudes. Mm. And when you shift where that is, you shift where the storms go. And that tends to be over the southern tier of the United States, which means usually weather than average conditions, especially in the wintertime. Is there anything that actually like causes the change into El Nino versus, I know we talk about La Nina on the other side of that. So normal conditions in the, tropical Pacific, in the tropical Pacific Ocean generally have the trade winds constantly blowing from the east to west along the equator. What ends up happening is all that water gets pushed to the western Pacific Ocean, warming along the way because, shockingly, the tropics are warm. <laughs> yeah. But eventually, sometimes the winds, those winds actually weaken or even occasionally reverse themselves. And all of that water that's been pushed up into the Western Pacific Ocean begins to slosh backwards mm. towards the Central and Eastern Pacific Ocean. And that is what causes all that warm water to come east and the thunderstorm activity to move to the east as well. If you can even believe it, the Pacific Ocean isn't flat. It's actually tilted a bit, with the Western Pacific Ocean being higher than the Eastern Pacific Ocean. Huh. And so trade winds, basically, those are what we have to blame or credit, depending on what kind of weather you like. What about the history of El Nino? And, and I mean that as in terms of how was it discovered and ultimately identified to a nameable thing where we can say, oh, the El Nino is in town. Sure. So El Nino actually was first coined by Peruvian fishermen hundreds of years ago because they would notice that certain times of the year around Christmas and December, the waters off the coast would kind of disappear with fish. There'd be no fish in the area and the waters would be warmer than average. This happened oftentimes around Christmas. So El Nino usually referred to Jesus and that's oh. what they would call El Nino. <laughs> oh, but the. There's two aspects of it. El uh -huh. Nino is part of this bigger thing called the El Nino Southern Oscillation. And the Southern Oscillation phrase comes from the entire opposite side of the Pacific Ocean, where scientists in India um, noticed in the late 1800s, early 1900s, that there would be this shift in atmospheric patterns across the Pacific. And they would coin that the Southern Oscillation. And it wasn't until the middle of the 20th century where scientists realized they were talking about the exact same thing. Just one looking at the atmosphere and one looking at the water. Is there anything else related to El Nino or the impacts that it has that you think the everyday weather watcher could benefit from learning? Sure, so just because there's an El Nino happening and it normally does something across the, the United States where we live, it is by no means a guarantee. Mm. If you're in this field for longer than a day, you know that you should not think you know more than Mother Nature. So El Nino is not the only game in town. There could be other things happening during the winter time. So why do we care so much about El Nino? Well, El Nino is the really, really rare climate phenomena that we can predict six months in advance. Wow. Other things we can't predict more than, let's say, a couple of weeks from, from occurring. And as far as season to season impact, what does El Nino tend to bring with it for the U.S.? So El Nino tends to bring wetter than average conditions across the southern tier of the United States okay. with the, actually the clearest signal across the Gulf Coast where you tend to see wetter than average conditions. And 
Not surprisingly, if you tend to see wetter than average conditions, it usually means that there are clouds and less sun. <laughs> uh -huh. So cooler than average conditions also tend to coincide with those areas where you tend to see more rainfall. Meanwhile, across the Northwest and across the North Central United States, it tends to be warmer than average and drier than average across the Northwest United States. It also tends to be drier than average um, across the Ohio Valley in that right. area around the Great Lakes because the storm track for where storms normally move has now been pushed south. So instead of going to the north, they're now south, and that north area tends to be drier than average. Okay, bonus question. This was just a curiosity of mine. We talk about El Nino, we talk about La Nina. Is it always one or the other? Yes, it's always one or the other. El Nino and La Nina are like brother and sister. They're two sides of the same coin. So uh, El Nino is a warming of the waters in the Pacific Ocean where I mentioned, yeah. and La Nina is the exact opposite. It's a cooling of the waters in the Pacific Ocean. So when you cool the waters in La Nina, you take the existing atmosphere the way it normally works and you rev it up to 11. El Nino shifts the whole thing. La Nina just says, I like this, let's make it go even better and just accelerates it. So basically it means that the conditions that we normally see in the United States for wintertime can be um, amplified um, a bit. So almost you can take what I said for El Nino and reverse it. So um, and that would be your impacts with La Nina. Do you guys then have like a scientific point where the handoff happens? Like, okay, it's El Nino, okay, it's less El Nino, okay, oh, boom, it's La, La Nina. Yeah, so we look at this area in the Pacific Ocean that we call the Nino 3.4 region. I don't know why they call it that. I, I it doesn't matter. I love it. For that. <laughs> it's for such a really fascinating thing. It's a very boring name. So this is area of the Central and Eastern Pacific Ocean that we look at to see where the ocean temperatures and what, what they're doing. So how much warmer than average or colder than average they are. For El Nino, we're looking for that to be about a half a degree Celsius above average. Mm -hmm. And then for La Nina, it's a half a degree Celsius below average. Well, Tom, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us, give us a little primer on El Nino, a little bit of fun backstory, and really set up everybody for a better understanding of what the weather is like out their window throughout the year.